The Warsaw Uprising began on the 1st of August, 1944. Zero Hour, or W Hour as they called it, was supposed to be at 5 o'clock. But the first outbreak of shooting began earlier in the day at Jollyborsch, the northern suburb of Warsaw. That encounter, which began at 1.30 p.m., was the first skirmish of the Warsaw Uprising. As the saying goes, much has been written. Was it a good idea? Was it launched at the right time? Were there other opportunities? You may well ask. The fact remains that it did take place, and the people who took part in it were brave and beautiful. In the annals of uprisings against tyrannical rule, the Warsaw Uprising is unsurpassed. For 63 days, the Poles waited for the Russians to come across the river from the east and aid them in the rebellion against the Nazis. This did not happen. History has told us why. The Russians were quite happy to watch the Poles be destroyed by the Germans, rather than for the Poles to be free after World War II. There is no doubt about this. This was Stalin's plan. The Warsaw Uprising is indelible on the memory of the 20th century. At the Warsaw Uprising Museum, this history is set in stark terms. We're able to take a close look at those 63 days of fighting for freedom. This is an experience that will not leave you untouched. It will change the way you think about history of this time. And it will remind you of what a great capital Warsaw actually is, the city that stood against one of the greatest tyrannies the world has ever seen and rose again to become a modern leading city in Europe. The next series of episodes will take you through the history of the Warsaw Uprising. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Ola and we are back at the Warsaw Uprising Museum and I'd like you to see something special. This is the Hardfire Museum which beats exactly 63 times a minute to commemorate 63 days of the Warsaw Rising. We need to remember that the Warsaw Rising militarily was against Germans but politically it was against Soviets who were standing just on the other side of the Vistula River and wanted to liberate Warsaw capital but uh, they eventually never did it when we were here during the Warsaw Rising. Okay, Ola, what are we uh, looking at here? Well, I'd like to show you insurgent armbands that were worn by the participants of the Warsaw Rising. They wore them on the right armband all through the time of the Warsaw Rising. Of course, we need to remember that these armbands are in the color of the Polish national flag, and white evokes freedom, purity, red. This is martyrdom, blood, so Polish national flag is very, very symbolic, yes? We need to remember that after five years of very difficult terror imposed on our community, finally we are allowed to uh, plant our national standard in the walls of wars or so. We are so uh, happy that finally we are free, yes? And in fact, those two months of the Warsaw Rising were the only two months of freedom in between 1939 and 19. 89, so imagine uh, how hilarious, yes, it was for us. And um, of course, uh, we need to remember that um, uh, Warsaw Rising um, happened in different parts of the city, yes, it took place, in fact. Uh, our positions were encircled by Germans. Some houses would be attacked many, many times by German units. And the problem was that Hitler asked SS units to finish off the Poles here, so many outlaws, criminals, rapists were called up here and 
fought here for a promised pardon. So, mm -hmm. so they, they of, emptied their prisons to fight here. Yeah, so Interesting. So I, didn't, I hadn't heard that. So yeah. scenes of barbarity. So, so yeah. it truly was a criminal enterprise. Yeah. yeah. The, what the Nazis did. Yeah. Unfortunately, and yeah. it's not that well known still, even in 2019. I, had, I read about it. I, yeah. I read a lot about the uprising. Just but, a, uh, mm. uh, not as much as you, of course, yeah. but I had never heard, read that. Yeah. yeah, so we need to remember about yeah. that because piles of corpses would reach up to the second floor, yes. Everything was burnt on the stop, not to leave traces behind, but traces uh, left behind. And for example, after the war, we found 12 tons of human ashes lying here inside the city of Warsaw. So imagine, even nowadays, when we construct something, we come across uh, human ashes. So in a sense, the, war, the you might say that, that the city had become uh, a sort of bizarre concentration camp of yeah. its own. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I had never thought about that, but when you put it this way... It was, indeed. Um, and, here, and here they are. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, uh, one thing I wanted to say was, uh, that I wanted to bring out, was we said before they didn't have uniforms. Yeah. yeah. But they had the armband, that was yeah. the uniform. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's what united. Uh, you could tell who somebody was with the army, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that was and, another purpose mm, of it, right? And what does it say on it? It says. So, for example, we have the armband of Tadeusz Komorowski, code neighbor. So we need to remember that every. He was single, the head guy, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, the chief commander of the home army, and the code name was needed because in conspiracy you could not use your real name and your surname. Yeah, and that's why they. Because you might be name. captured and yeah, tortured, yeah. and then and then you could. Immediately Say, give up the person's who's name. My friend, yeah. 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 Whereas if you knew the code name, there was nothing you could do. Yeah. And if the and when, once the Germans knew that, they mm. knew there was no point to kill you mm. because you really didn't know. Yeah. Except but so the they tortured us. But they would do it anyway. Severely. Yeah. That was the idea. That it, was a, it never ended. Yeah. The uh, uh, also each of these uh, there were different cadres or groups or mm -hmm. uh, units uh, throughout the city. Now, what, what did the, how many people were usually in a unit and what did a unit contain? Well, it's dependent. Generally, we need to remember that at the start of the rising, yeah. there were 35,000 insurgents yeah. against 20,000 Germans. Yes. Okay. So, and there were, as you said, there were lots of units composed of people who were either volunteers, but generally these were people who were preparing for the rising all through the years of World War II. So this was not a novelty for them, yes? They, yeah. they knew how to use weapons, they knew how yeah. to throw, uh, throw grenades and stuff like that. Yeah, so they were already prepared, yes? The problem was no, that they No, they'd been they training during this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, w there was always... A was always aiming, they just didn't know when it would be. Yeah. But at the moment of liberation from the uh, Soviet, the Allied, mm. supposed liberation yeah. from Soviet yeah. and Allied armies, there would be mm. uh, this uprising. Mm. And it took place, they just didn't get the support, which yeah. is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, more from Poland Daily Travel with Alexandra and with me will add to the Warsaw Uprising Museum. We'll be right back.